YouTube is great. It's fantastic. It is my dream job. And having done it full time for two and a half years, it can be very easy to take it for granted. So regardless of all the negatives or any negatives that being a YouTuber has, of which all jobs do have, all jobs have negatives, YouTube is still an absolute dream of mine. For the regular viewers on my channel, you can think of this video as a little bit of a, a story time Rocket League style video, um, but it's going to be a little bit more serious as well at the same time. So I'm going to give a quick shout out to the sponsors of this channel. I'm just going to play this sponsored intro. You can check out what they're about, and if you do, use my discount code to save yourself some money. I'm going to play the intro, then get right into the topic of this video. But yeah, this intro is much needed. <laughs> you guys need to go and check out the sponsors of this video, Logger.com. They sell gift cards for cheaper than they actually are. If you use my discount code Pixel at checkout for 6% off, say you want a $50 gift card, go to the checkout, use my code, and you can get it for cheaper than $50. If you want to buy V-Bucks on Fortnite, Keys on Rocket League, or much more, then you can go and do that using the link in the description. Logger is not affiliated with any game that I'm playing or showing on the channel, but they're really supporting me and I hope you go show them some love. So with that being said, enjoy the rest of the video. I haven't really spoken to anyone about this. Gina, I have a bit but maybe not to the extent and in depth like I'm going to be doing in this video today. So a few months ago, I really wasn't okay. Um, not at all. Uh, one day I broke down and I decided to just hit record on my webcam and I'd like to talk about it. The truth about YouTube, the dark side of it, the good, the bad, and what, what happened to me personally. So if you do want to sit back and listen, you can just, you know, sit back, relax, enjoy the Rocket League gameplay in the background, and just listen to the story if you'd like. So here's the very start of the clip that I recorded, okay? Now this video was taken just before I restarted daily uploads on the channel again about three months ago and in the state I was in I was too dumb to color correct the video properly which I did do about a minute or two into recording it and somehow I didn't record the microphone so I'll never know truly what I say throughout the video but I can read my lips at the beginning and the first words that come out of my mouth are I'm really struggling and it, well yeah it, that's just how it is really really struggling there's times to joke around and there's times to be serious but you can see on my face that there is something really really wrong deeply like it's it really hurt and and i think i was just making that video for myself uh, i never intended to release it and i guess i'm not really releasing it because there is no audio with it you don't know what i'm talking about i can't remember what i'm talking about i don't want this to be all doom and gloom but i do want this to be truthful so if you're considering a career in youtube or anything like that then maybe give this video an extra extra bit of attention uh, i'm going to tell you some of the dark sides of youtube in my experience because uh, as i said i've been doing youtube full time for about 30 months now now. <laughs> and then just a little bit about my story and personally how it affected me and how I'm coming through the other side of it. First of all, like I said, this video was taken before I was really doing daily uploads on the channel. And uh, as someone someone like me, I love to be productive. I love to make videos. Back when I had good internet, I was making two videos a day, sometimes three videos a day. And I did that whole straight for over a year until my computer broke and I physically couldn't. I love to be productive. I love to be kept busy. But for some reason, I just couldn't think of videos to make. or I just couldn't bring myself to make videos. And it really was negatively affected me. But regardless of whether you're uploading every day or every week, when you're a YouTuber, you can't switch off. That is one of the big disadvantages to being a YouTuber as your job. People talk about social media cleanses, uh, getting off Instagram or getting off Facebook, Twitter for like a whole week, just not using their phone for a whole week. And they say how much it benefits them, how great they feel. And I can really imagine that. But the thing is, I just can't. I can't do that. And not as in I'm literally attached to my phone. Yes, I do pick up my phone way too much. Yes, I am. I guess you could say addicted to my phone. But at the same time, I need to go on my phone for my job. I need to check video data, stuff like that. I need to check emails. I cannot take a week off without thinking about the internet and my phone and social media. And that's just one of the negatives of the job. You can't switch off. You just can't. My parents, for instance, they both work in banks. Uh, my dad recently has, uh, over the last couple of years, started taking more work home with him, doing stuff like that. But, you know, for the most part, they can work, say, Monday to Friday if they're not working on the weekends. My dad sometimes used to work Saturdays. But if they're not working on the weekends, they can do their Monday to Friday and more or less just tune out their work Saturday and Sunday. Whereas being a YouTuber, you can't do that. Especially with YouTube as a hobby and watching YouTube videos. One of the things I like to do in my spare time is watch YouTube videos. I'm on the app itself all the time. Having a hobby as a job is the best, but when you think about sort of like your normal person, they have their job is a big bulk of their life. Their hobbies are another big bulk of their life that they can use to separate themselves from their jobs. But for me, it only brings me closer into it. And I'm not even a great YouTuber. I, I should probably 
plug my merch more. Yeah, that's right. I have merch. I'm wearing merchandise. You guys probably didn't even know I had merch. It's always linked in the description, but I never shout it out. I should be more active on Twitter and Instagram. I should work harder to try and build a social media following, but I just don't because YouTube's my thing. And it's very scary to go from living with your parents paying very little in terms of bills to then moving out and paying for everything. It's all so expensive, like being an adult is expensive and the last year has taught me that because about a year ago I moved out, I mean I'm living in this apartment and then in a month's time I'll be moving out fully out of this place into a house and there's so much stuff you have to pay for, it's actually ridiculous and all of a sudden I have responsibility for earning money, I have to earn money to live, whereas at my parents... I didn't really need to worry about money that much. And then comes the next part about YouTube that a lot of people have spoken about, and that is that it's so unpredictable. And even if, for me, I've been lucky enough to say that the income over a longer period of time has been fairly consistent, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be. Like, it could change. I have a load of responsibilities now, and the potential of not fulfilling them is very, very stressful to me. And if YouTube were to never work out, then I wouldn't help... I, I couldn't help but feel like it's my fault and that I'd be to blame because I could have, should have done better to keep this my job, basically. I want to interject here that I don't want this video to sound like I'm complaining. I'm more just explaining the situation. I know I'm fortunate to be in the place I'm in, but at the same time, I'm not going to downplay it. I know I worked so, so hard to get to where I was. I was doing A-levels when I was uploading every single day on YouTube, earning zero money. If it was easy to do what I'm doing, then everyone would be doing it. Because when you get there, when you get to that stage of being a full-time YouTuber, to get paid for doing something you enjoy is the best. So I don't want this to sound like I'm complaining, I'm just being honest and showing you the other side of the coin. This led to me kind of feeling stuck with the content that I was making because I really enjoy Rocket League, but it's going to be really, really hard if I ever want to branch out and change up the content on my channel from a financial point of view because I need the income. Whereas when I was at my mum and dad's house where I was working at McDonald's, I had the freedom to make any sort of switch in terms of content. Like three years ago, when I was at my parents and working at McDonald's, I stopped making Minecraft videos and turned to Rocket League. And obviously that decision was one of the best decisions decisions I've ever made because it led me to this point and maybe there's another decision that I'll make like that but nowadays a decision like that comes with way more risk so much more risk and that puts a real toll on you YouTube's my job at the end of the day and it's scary to know that if it ever fails or goes wrong like I said then it's my fault when you're a youtuber and you're worried about your channel just like disappearing you can't take time off that's another big thing about YouTube, as well as not being able to switch off from social media, you can't take time off. You're by yourself, for the most part, unless you have a team of people, you're by yourself working hard every single day, and you don't see anyone. And uh, that brings me up to the, the next big point, and that is, at least in my case, loneliness. That has been huge. Huge! It hit me like a ton of bricks this last year. Some days I didn't even go outside and even sometimes multiple days in a row and I cannot stress enough the importance of just surrounding yourself with people. Once I started working in the apartment here and not having to go out, I even missed commuting to work and I just had a period of time where I felt really down and I think my family actually picked up on it and they, they weren't even seeing me and they still could just kind of tell that something was wrong with me. I've opened up to Gina about it a, a few times and honestly, I, I don't know what I would have done without her. So if she's decided to watch this video, if you're at this point, Gina, seriously, I don't know what I would have done without you by my side because you were the only person I saw for a long period of time. And uh, you keep me going. Now, this is a bit personal, but at the time I recorded that video, I also got hit with some sort of tax issues. And it's not really an issue, but I was led to believe that there was an amount of tax, you know, the amount of tax that I owed, I had to pay it by the end of January 2020. And let's call the sum of the amount I owe 3x, okay? A bit of algebra for you there. So I was led to believe that I had eight months to pay that money off. And I thought, okay, I can budget for that. That's all fine. Fine by me. There was some miscommunication, and I basically got told... In May, you have to pay X now, so a third of it, and then another X by the end of July. So all of a sudden, two thirds of the amount I thought I was going to pay in 2020, I had to pay by the end of last month. So that really hit me. Luckily, I had some savings. You know, I didn't get totally screwed or anything like that. But that really just sort of hit me and that stressed me out because it was the first time I felt a financial strain. It was the first time I felt like, whoa, like... What, what's going on? And that's such a first world problem to have, but it's, it is scary when it's all on me, it's all my responsibility, and all of a sudden, it, it feels like things are a little bit tight. <laughs> and that's why this video is sponsored, really. Logan's done so much for me. And that's another thing I'd like to just warn you guys about before you decide to get into YouTube is that at the very beginning, YouTube feels like a gold mine. It feels like 
a fairy tale. It only took a couple of months of my channel blowing up that I started getting paid more than McDonald's were paying me. And I was like, I'm getting paid to do what I enjoy, to just do the best stuff. And it feels like almost free money because you would have done it regardless. You would have made videos regardless if it is a passion of yours. And then obviously as you get bigger, there is potential to earn quite a little bit more than perhaps say the average person my age would earn. But then all of a sudden the adult world hits you and, and tax comes in. You have to budget for things and savings and all that stuff. And I, I learned the hard way. I learned about, you know, having that sort of scare. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I didn't prepare as well for this as I should have done. School didn't really teach you about taxes and they really, they should, they should teach you about that. I'd much rather it was like a normal job where I got paid a lower amount but my taxes were taken care of rather than having to do it all myself. And because when you get the money, when you first get it, you feel like it's all yours, but actually it's not. You just don't know that yet at the time. <laughs> With the fast growth of my channel a couple of years ago, I was very much thrown into the deep end. And that month of May was kind of where it all just sort of caught up with me. And like I said, I wasn't overwhelmed. I didn't get like, I was overwhelmed, but I didn't get fully consumed. I didn't let it destroy me or anything like that. And I'm, I'm fine now. It just all comes at once. And when you're by yourself, it can be quite hard to stomach and quite hard to deal with. I've been feeling under a lot of pressure this year also because I haven't been able to make my best content. And I'm aware of that, but I, I'm trying. But a lot of it is due to my slow internet speed. I had to stop uploading Fortnite altogether because my upload speed was always too slow for the Fortnite videos that I was making to even be relevant by the time I was able to upload them. Because if it takes four to six hours to upload a Fortnite video, if that video is about an update, everyone's already done it six hours ago. So I had to stop that aspect of my channel. That was an aspect I really enjoyed. I still play Fortnite to this day. The game is in a bit of a state of disarray at this moment, but I really enjoy that game. I would have loved to have continued making content for it, but I genuinely, logistically couldn't, and it really stressed me out. I never felt lonely when I was able to stream on YouTube or stream on Twitch. I did stream on Twitch. I have a Twitch. I have nearly 10,000 followers on Twitch. I streamed on YouTube. I streamed on Twitch back in the day, and I never felt lonely. I always had you guys to talk to, but now for nearly a year, I haven't been able to live stream, and it's made me feel like I've become more distant from you lot and I never want that to happen. I still read all of my comments as I say in multiple videos. I read all my comments but I can't help but feel a bit further away from you guys because I haven't been able to interact with you as much and that has... Motorbike, you're ruining the moment. That has made me feel even more lonely and I hated it. I hated that. Particularly because there was very little I could do about it. And that leads me to the other thing. And that is that the stress of the work really throughout the last year caused me to turn to something that's always been a comfort of mine. And that is eating. I was so fit last year. I was enjoying my exercise and eating clean. But once I took to comfort eating, I started to fall out of my good habits. And it's it's been quite tough. I've gained weight. Now, the last few months, I've somewhat got a grip of the problem but nowhere near to the extent that I would like. And I haven't even really gained that much weight or any weight really on the scale since New Year's. But that's most, most, mostly because I've been losing weight and gaining weight and just kind of been staying the same, making very little progress. I gained all the weight I lost during my sort of fitness journey last year. Uh, I gained all that and went to uh, an all-time high of 15 stone 12. I was at 11 stone 6 a year ago at my fittest. And I went to 15 stone 12, which is, what's that? 4 stone 6, which is what? 62 pounds. 62 pounds gained, which is ridiculous. I'm about 15 stone 1 now, so I'm less than 15, 12. But that just, just shot me in the foot, really, with my self-esteem. It went like this. And it just sucked. It sucked. I, I occasionally get comments of people saying that I'm fat and, and stuff like that. And it, it hurts a little bit because I know it's true. I say I'm not obese. I, I am. I, I technically am. I, I don't look obese. You wouldn't look at me on the street and think that's an obese man. You might think he's a bit of a chubber, but statistically I am obese, I think. And I knew that surrounding myself with friends and family would be the perfect fix for my loneliness, but in tandem with my weight gain, I didn't want to go out with my friends. I didn't want to see my family. I didn't want to see people because of how awful I felt within myself and how low my self-esteem was. I didn't want to go out. I didn't like the way clothes fit on me. I didn't like the way they hugged my body and I felt fat in areas I just didn't like. I saw stretch marks on my body that I'd never seen before and it just... It sucked. I'd never been diagnosed with depression or anything. I'd always assumed that I was never depressed because surely people who were actually depressed, I say actually, I don't know, felt worse than that. Not that I had any way of knowing how someone who's actually depressed would feel, and I had no way of comparing the way I felt to anyone else. And it sounds dark, but whether you're drowning in the deepest ocean or you're drowning in a paddling pool, you're still drowning. So you can't compare your feelings to others. I wasn't okay. And uh, yeah, I still felt bad. 
I shouldn't downplay it really. But things are looking up since. This was kind of a video about the dark side of YouTube and in a sense what that dark side did to me. It won't be the same for everyone, but that's probably why you see a lot of people online not complaining, but just having some sort of depression or anxiety because YouTube is lonely. It is. You don't have colleagues. You don't walk in. That small little interaction you have at school with your friends where you walk in your classroom and say, Oh, you're right, mate. How you doing? That's it. Or you walk into the office or the supermarket if you work there or a restaurant and just say hi to someone and say what's up. Those small little interactions you don't get as a YouTuber. You just don't get them. And when you don't, you really, really miss them. But things are looking up since that video that I filmed. And that's why I've decided to make this video because I'm I'm in a clearer headspace to be able to talk about it. Jean has been on summer holidays from her work for the last month and seeing her more has been really great. It's really helped. And I've been uploading consistently on the channel and it's been a lot of fun. At the time of recording, I got the keys to my new house today. I think I mentioned that in this video. And I'm looking to get the best internet I possibly can so I can get my career sort of back on track, enjoying it, streaming, making videos. And I plan to start eating cleaner, exercising, and just getting out of this slump. I'm on the way back out of what I would call my personal rock bottom. I know for a fact it could get lower if there was some sort of tragedy, but I don't want to think about that. But my personal rock bottom at this point, which was those few months ago, I'm getting, I'm on the way back up. So that is why I feel like I could make this video. I'm in a better headspace to make it now. And uh, yeah, so bottom line, YouTube is scary, but it's also the best job I could have ever asked for. So thank you everybody for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe today to join the Pixel Army. Ivan Pixel, you have been awesome. You mean a lot to me. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.